So you just got your drone, you take it up, and then this happens. In this video, I wanna go through some of the biggest mistakes new pilots make when they're out flying. And I'm not doing this alone, I have my buddy Aldrin with me with the channel Flight Path, and we're gonna go through 12 different mistakes that you wanna avoid when you're out flying. Now mistake number one is letting your battery drain too low to get to the point where it's gonna auto return to home and there's nothing you can do. So on a DJI drone, it's automatically set to return to home at a certain point and you can override this, but if you keep overriding this setting, eventually it's gonna get to the point where it's almost completely out of juice and it will just take off and move towards that home point because it's trying to land. And if you're too far away, well, it's just gonna fall out of the sky. So one of the things you wanna do is manage your battery life and make sure that you have enough battery to come back and enough battery in case something major happens where it has to sit there and hover for a little bit. The last thing you wanna do is fly into your buddy's truck. Mistake number two is flying too low to the ground in sport mode. So when you're flying a drone in sport mode, the drone itself is actually tilted pretty far and it's gonna be moving fast. So when you're flying super low to the ground and you have this tilt happening, well, there's a chance that your propellers might actually hit the ground. And you can see from this footage, I was flying super low to the ground and I got lucky because when I pulled the drone back, my propellers looked like this. All the tips had been chewed off. And that's because with the tilt of the drone and the speed, it was hitting the ground just slightly where it was destroying the propellers. So when you're flying a drone super fast, just make sure you have enough clearance between the ground and the drone so that you don't end up taking off your propellers and then having a catastrophic crash. Now, one of the mistakes I've run into recently is taking my drone out into the field and I will actually forget to clear out the internal storage on my drone. Now, a lot of new drones these days are coming out with internal storage, whether it's eight gig or 16, 64. So a lot of them do have that internal storage on there. So it's not necessarily writing to the memory card, it is writing to that built-in storage on the drone. Now, of course, it's always recommended to bring an extra memory card with you, but sometimes you kind of depend on that internal storage to bail you out. And the problem is if it's full while you're in the field, most of the time you have to plug that into a computer. And a lot of times you're not gonna bring your laptop, your computer out there, you don't just have your drone with you. So the one thing you wanna do before you head out the door, make sure that internal storage is downloaded and cleared out on your drone. Now with all the new drones right now with higher resolutions, so many different options for you to choose from. The one mistake I made while I was out there was not specifying the resolution that I wanted before I took off for each flight. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, this one right here, this is the Mavic 3, and this one actually shoots at 5.1K at up to 50 frames a second. And not just that, it also has 4K at 120, which I was also testing out. But the thing was, when I got back to my computer and I downloaded my files, I didn't realize I forgot to switch back and forth for certain shots. And then I had to go back out and reshoot because I shot a bunch of video that I didn't want at 120. I actually wanted at 5.1 at 30. So one of the mistakes I made was not double checking my video resolution, making sure I had the right settings before I get up and fly for a particular shot. Now the next mistake is not checking your drone before you head out to go fly and checking your firmware. So drones will have updates and sometimes your drone will force an update before it's allowed to take off. And this is something that you wanna avoid before you get into a situation where you don't have cell connection or you don't have Wi-Fi connection. So for example, I was up in Alaska and I was working with the DJI Mavic 3. It was pre-released, I was working with pre-release software and I actually made the mistake of going out to this epic glacier where there was no cell service, no Wi-Fi, and I tried to take the drone off and it just wouldn't connect. And this all would have been avoided if I didn't rush out the door and actually check the firmware when I was sitting at my hotel room. We spent all day getting to this point, and unfortunately we weren't able to fly the Mavic 3. As soon as we got back into cell service, it connected, it did the update that it needed to do, and then I could start flying again. But this is way after we left where we had this awesome scene to shoot. So before you leave, always check your drone, always check that your batteries are charged, that your propellers are good, that your controller's charged, that you have a memory card, and check the firmware to make sure that there's no issues and that you can take off and start flying when you get out to these epic landscapes. Now to ensure you have a safe flight, the one thing you wanna look at is how many satellites are connected to your drone. You take off, you're always gonna to wanna to listen for that home point that has been set. 
what I've seen a bunch of times is people will start up their drone either inside their house or inside their car and then put it right outside and then take off. And they don't necessarily hear that home point set because GPS might not have already been set on the drone. There it is. Home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. So don't make that mistake and just put the drone up in the air too quickly. Make sure you guys hear the home point has been set. That way, if anything does go wrong, it'll ensure that you have a strong connection if it has to go back into return to home. Now the next mistake is not getting variety of your shots. So if you wanna create interesting videos that you want people to watch, you don't wanna just keep shooting the same thing over and over. You don't just wanna put the drone up and keep getting the same wide landscape shot again and again and again. So you wanna create a variety of shots and if you can, you wanna tell a story in your shots. And I did another video around the DJI Mavic 3 that's how to get cinematic looking footage and a big aspect of that video is tell a story, have a shot progression, have something happening in your video. And I'll include a link down below in the description to where you can check out that video. Now one of the mistakes I see a lot is people not utilizing the tools that are actually in the app to help you shoot and compose your shot a little bit better. Now I'm flying the Mavic and it's using the DJI Fly app and all you have to do is on the top right, you click on that and click on the camera setting. And if you scroll down, you can use things like the histogram, you can turn that on. That way you can see where your exposure is, as well as turning on and off the grid line. So if you wanted to compose your shot a little bit better, you could turn on the thirds, as well as if you want to see that center point. That way here on your screen now, you can compose your shot, you can see exactly where your subject lies. So if you wanted to move things around on those third lines, or if you wanted to make sure that your horizon is perfectly centered and leveled, use those grid lines which are inside of the app. The next mistake is shooting with an ND filter when it's not needed. So ND filters have a very specific purpose and you don't wanna just put an ND filter on your drone and fly and shoot everything. You only wanna use an ND filter when you're trying to achieve motion blur. Now, ND filters aren't needed all the time. And most of the time, if the drone's high up in the sky, you're never gonna notice this motion blur. The only time that you really need to use an ND filter is when you're flying low and fast. When you fly in that way, you'll actually see motion blur in your frame. And the issue is if you leave an ND filter on your drone, it's gonna force you to have your aperture wide open, shoot at slower shutter speeds, and potentially boost your ISO. So if you're in a lower light situation, you're, you're gonna have more noise in your footage. And if you're shooting photos, well, you're gonna end up with blurry photos. And so use your ND filter sparingly and make sure that you know why the ND filter is on your drone. Now after each flight, when you bring it back in, the one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is inspect your drone. Of dust or dirt and debris will kick up onto your drone when you take off. And some of that will stick to it. So you just wanna make sure that when you bring your drone back in after each flight, Take a look at your lens, see if you have anything on the body, anything on the props that might affect your flight. Sometimes I'll just take out my little air rocket or duster and just clean out the lens. So sometimes you'll get some dirt or debris that's been kicked up during landing or takeoff or while it's just out there up in the air. Now number 11 is flying without knowing the rules and regulations. You don't wanna just go somewhere and put the drone up without doing a little research first. When I was in Alaska and in Utah, we made sure to research all the locations we were going and make sure that we could fly a drone in all of these locations. And we were even able to fly in Goblin Valley State Park because they allow permits. And we went through the process and got that permit. Now this permit wasn't super hard to get, but understanding what the permit process is before you actually get to a location is super important. And another thing is if you wanna make money from your drone, or you just wanna make sure that you know all the rules and regulations, I highly suggest you go and get your part 107 license. Now, depending on which drone you have, some of them have obstacle avoidance, the 360 obstacle avoidance all the way around the Mavic 3. And most recently I was out flying a different branded drone and it also had obstacle avoidance on it. So I tried doing some intelligent flight modes on it, tried doing some follow me modes and assumed that the obstacle avoidance would automatically turn on. Of course, that wasn't the case and I was a little bit too late, ended up clipping one of the branches on a tree and crashed my drone because I assumed that the obstacle avoidance was automatically on. So it's definitely a mistake that I hopefully won't do again. Whichever drone you use, whether it's a DJI one or another brand, and you are depending on something to work, make sure it's actually turned on or off in the app itself before you get out there and fly and hopefully not run into the same issues that I did. Now make sure you head over to Aldrin's channel, Flight Path, and check out his videos. And next, I highly suggest you check out this video right here. It goes through a bunch of different drone moves that you can use when you're out flying to get better looking footage. 
I'll see you over there.